Evolve plus Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. How the heck did I miss this? What's going on, everybody? It's Ghost Robo, and how the heck did I miss this game? There's this old adage that when you're at E3, you end up seeing far less than if you were just watching E3 from afar, but typically, I do a good job of keeping all the announcements in my view, but somehow, I missed one of the most awesome games of E3, and this has to be the most under-the-radar incredible title shown off at E3 2017. It's called Hunt the Showdown, and it's freaking insane. In 2017, it is hard for a game to make me crazy excited for it. Like, I'll get pumped for stuff. I'm really excited for Assassin's Creed Origins. You know, I was waiting for Horizon Zero Dawn for ages. Zelda Breath of the Wild was awesome. Mario Odyssey is gonna be fantastic. But Hunt the Showdown has me like literally clawing at the screen to play this because it's such an awesome concept. They are fusing one of my favorite games, Evolve, and that idea of hunting monsters as a cooperative unit in a big map with AI all around you, and they're fusing that with player unknowns, battlegrounds, and sort of that PvP style and that risk reward aspect. And they're bringing in aspects of, of DayZ, of Left 4 Dead. It is looking absolutely incredible. There's really no other way to put it. And, and hopefully, you get that from the game footage. But there's a lot of moving parts that make up this majestic machine that is Hunt the Showdown. It's, it's a lot to take in, kind of, at first blush. But once you see it all, once you get it, ugh, it looks so good. So I've read all the articles, all the interviews, watched all the footage, and I'm boiling it down to this 10-minute version of why this game can be something that you could sink countless hours into. Basically what this game is, is five teams of two are dropped into a map with the goal of killing a boss monster, grabbing the bounties, and extracting. So it, it even brings in some of the division with the dark zone of you have to get out before you get the goods. And it's a pitch black map. It looks absolutely phenomenal. Crytek are, are no slouches when it comes to visuals. And it shows here. This game looks gorgeous. There's no release date right now. It's probably going to hit uh, early access at some point in 2018. They say that they want player feedback. So it sounds like they may go that route. And with a multiplayer game of this style, you, you kind of need that testing ground. But you drop five teams of two into a map, and they're looking for clues to find this boss monster. They kill the boss monster, it drops two bounties for, for the two players, and then they gotta grab and get out. But if other players kill you while you have the bounties, they can take them. Or if other players kill you while you're fighting the boss, they can grab the bounties themselves. And it's all about how best to approach the situation. You know, are you a player that just lurks through the map waiting for an opportunity to pounce? Are you an aggressive player that works through the map searching for the clues to find the boss and try to be the first to get there and the first to have a chance to escape. And, and the map is littered with hazards, right? There's, there's a variety of environments. They've got a whole bunch of buildings and the boss can be in one of 15 spots. So it mixes it up. Currently, there's only one map. They're focusing on perfecting that singular map before they expand. Obviously, they will go beyond that. But there's, there's catacombs, there's graveyards, there's villages, there's churches. There's a lot of different areas that this boss can be. So you're looking for these clues. You have this kind of dark energy ability that allows you to tap into uh, the, these clue spots. And when you do, you'll see like a quick vision of where the boss is. And if you collect three, you'll know exactly where it is. It'll be marked on the map. But other people won't. And so they could be doing their own thing, searching on their own, fighting AI. There's different types of AI around the map. That's where sort of that Left 4 Dead style comes in, a bit of that evolve. But these are tougher enemies. So you'll have these insectoid slash human, almost Resident Evil style monstrosities. Uh, and, and, and they're placed based on this spatial awareness that the AI has. So like in open areas, there's hounds. And in more closed off areas, there are meatheads, which are these big, disgusting creatures that serve as sort of an area uh, control, area denial type enemy. And there's also uh, hive type enemies that spew bugs and ugh, just super gross, but they are tougher to take down. And there's regular grunts as well that, that sort of function as the, the runners or the, or the typical zombies, but every encounter may alert players to where you are, because this is a game where sound and sight are incredibly valuable, but at the same time incredibly dangerous. So firing a gun may help you fend off one of the hounds, but it also will alert other players to your presence and set you up for a potential ambush. Or using a flare may help you see the scenery before you and illuminate the best path forward. But that will also really indicate to everyone else 
where you are on the map. And so it's it's always a, a tense situation. It's always risk reward. Of, do you hide? Do you go in for the action? Do you use your better weapons early? Do you want to save them for the boss? Do you want to use that flare maybe to blind a different team? You have to be very aware of everything, aware of where the AI is, aware of where the other hunters are. You'll see a lot of uh, encounters off in the distance and decide if you want to capitalize on those or if you want to sneak by. There is no ability to steal gear from other players. It's not like if you down someone, you can go and, and take their stuff, take their experience. They wanted the focus to be on the boss monsters and on the bounties, not on just going through the map trying to, to shoot every other player in the head. And it seems like players go down pretty quickly. You'll notice in the video uh, that you only take a couple of shots, so you got to be careful and it brings in some of those stealth and survival elements of being just super aware of line of sight super aware of exposure super aware of noise and kind of taking things at a tactical pace to make sure that you are in the best position possible you can revive your teammates and that seems to be a, a critical element of survival uh, and it looks to be a quick revive that you get them back up on their feet with low health and then you can bandage yourself there is a bleeding effect there's no hunger uh, or anything like that they didn't want to push it too survivally but there is bleeding there is the ability to revive and obviously like i said you go down pretty quickly things are loud things are light it is a square kilometer map and you got to be Careful. And you'll be selecting gear before the match, knowing what boss you're gonna fight. So in this case, they were fighting a giant spider. And no one gets to play the monster, uh, so it deviates from something like Evolve there, but the the monster is, is fast, and he's not as difficult as something from Evolve. It's, it's a little bit easier, because the goal is more about tracking and hunting, hence the title of the game, and then the showdown that takes place. And that showdown involves the boss and then the other players, because once you kill the boss, Everyone's alerted to where you are. You have to banish the boss back to hell and then grab those bounties and get out of there. But when that happens, it becomes a rush either to the bounties or to the multiple extraction points where people can lay in wait and try to take you up. But there's some really great aspects here. There's permadeath. So if you die, you lose your character and you lose your gear, which adds even more intensity. But, but they don't stop there. It gets even cooler. You can choose to just extract out of the map if you feel like the situation is going poorly. So you might be like, you know what, we wasted too much gear, I value this character too much, you'll be getting upgrades for the character the longer they survive, the more success they have, you'll be able to expand their health, you'll get passive traits, they mentioned one being uh, being able to dual wield quickfire, and you may not want to risk that character, so you can just tap out, but it never alerts the others that you've left. So there could only be three players left, or four players left, or all the teams left, or no teams left, and you won't know, so you'll still have that tension of who could be out there and how careful do I need to be. Now, there is an overall progression to your account, so uh, you will be able to, uh, you know, sort of unlock things as you go and keep in an overall progression and then a character-specific progression. So they got a nice balance there of rewarding you for playing uh, a long time and then for rewarding you for playing well. And I love that balance. I love adding that that stress and adding that, that tough call of, like, how... Daring do I want to be with this character? Because that's something in in uh, player unknowns battlegrounds that doesn't factor in. If you want to like go crazy, you just go crazy and die, and then you know queue up and you're back in. But here, your character will be no more. Now the bloodline continues to keep the unlocks you've 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 made, but you will lose gear and you will lose the individual upgrades for that character. And you can picture a scenario where you get this character you know, 10, 20, 30, 50 matches in and you're tied to him and tied to his look and tied to, you know, the upgrades and you don't want to sacrifice that. But it's all about making different sacrifices. You can't have it every way. If you sit there and do nothing, right, you sit there and just wait for others to find the monster. You don't know where they're going to be. That's where the 15 locations come in because it, it, you, you can't wait at the right spot. It, unless you go out and actively hunt the clues and actively hunt the monster, you are going to be just gambling. And there is a sense of gamble in this game and you can do it. It sounds like the type of match experience where there is a big winner, but there can also be multiple winners. And here's how. Sometimes the map will spawn two targets instead of just one big old spider. There may be a high value boss and a lower value boss. So technically that would be four bounties, right? Because each boss drops two bounties. So a big boss that has two, let's say, 100 value bounties and a small boss that has, say, two 60 value bounties. So you could wait for everyone to go for that big boss and then make your way towards the small, get that, and get out. 
to gain some ground, to get some currency, and to improve your characters without risking an all-out showdown. Or you could be super greedy and say, you know what, we took out the small, let's see if we can camp and try to take out the escaping uh, two bounty hunters after they get the large. And that also mixes things up because it might be one target, it might be two targets, and where they are is different every time. Between these 15 locations, you know, you have the different zones of the map that include different AI, and if they're able to add and include a bunch of maps, you can see how this would become super, super interesting. Hopefully they find a lot of ways to, to mess with the variety, because as we've seen from games like Evolve or Left 4 Dead, you want to have really good monsters, really good creatures, and then at some level, you need to have a bunch of them, right? You need to have variety that spices things up, especially if you're able to see the monster pre-match and pick your loadout based on that. You know, you're going to want to have a different one, so it's not just going with the same ultimate strategy each time and grinding the same map. You know, they said if they if they get to a point where players can speed run a map or sort of figure out a, a best path through, then they've screwed up, and then that ruins, you know, what they've set out to create. So they're very determined to not let that happen, which I think is a great sign. And, and the developers that were interviewed at E3 and that gave the presentation, they sound like they really know what they're doing. They want to make this special. It started off as a totally different project years and years ago, and there's a little fear that Crytek, through all the financial troubles they've had lately, you know, maybe this game is something that's going to be delayed indefinitely and over and over again. But it feels like there is a passion here that will not be contained. What they showed was awesome. It's in a pre-alpha state, but it has enough polish that I feel like it would be fun right now. And the gear is important as well, right? You've got different weapons and using them burns them. There is an infinite ammo. There are supply stations in the map that can help you re-up some things, but your gear that you send out could be entirely lost or entirely spent and then you may not win anything. There is a potential that you go through and don't die, but you burn through a bunch of gear and aren't able to catch the escaping hunters. And then you just out of luck. You just burned a bunch of resources. They're stating that the matches will take 20 to 40 minutes, which I feel like is a very good length. It's not super quick, like a, a TDM round, and it's not super long, um, like a Dota match or something of that sort. It feels like it, it hits a nice sweet spot, and I feel like this game is all going to be about finding a sweet spot, and that's why Early Access seems like something they're gunning for, and something like it will hit eventually on Steam. I am beyond excited for this. I feel like it fuses a lot of my favorite aspects of different multiplayer games into one and brings it to this really like a culmination point where you have the monster battling of Evolve. You have the, the Left 4 Dead, you know, making your way through the map style with these different insectoid mutations. You have the, the permadeath and the progression of a roguelike. You have, you know, the PvP aspect and that intensity of surviving against others of a uh, player unknowns battlegrounds you have a lot of these awesome aspects and they found a way to fuse them and it doesn't feel cheesy it doesn't feel rote it doesn't feel it feels very organic it feels genuine it's not like they just took everything and then threw it into a blender and it came out this disgusting brown mess it, it came out a beautiful fruit and they found a new fruit and it's something like absolutely delicious and I cannot wait to sink my teeth in because if they do it right if they find enough variety in the progression enough variety in the gear and enough variety in the in the maps in the monsters in the bosses in the the way it's mixed up each round like this could be crazy I already love what they're doing in terms of giving you options for how the round plays out and and what your end point is right your end point could be getting the bounties and getting out of there your end point could be getting a small bounty and getting out while everyone else dukes it out your end point could be you know what burn through too much not worth it let's just bail you know your end point could be dying and losing progress and they they made it co-op it's always teams of two because they wanted you to have that extreme interaction and extreme tension of like your buddy sees something, they're freaking out, that makes you freak out, that adds to it, right? If you're playing by yourself, I, I think it'd be cool if they did find a way to incorporate a, a solo mode. But right now, it's just a 2v2, v2, v2, v2 mode with that big old boss, or maybe two bosses. And I like the fact that, while limiting in some ways, requiring co-op seems to just add to the overall sense of, of extreme risk-reward, extreme choice, and ultimately some sort of sacrifice. That is Hunt the Showdown beyond crazy about this game. I hope it turns out as cool as it can be because it really seems like something that could redefine the multiplayer space and capture a gigantic audience once it releases. Let me know your thoughts and your take on Hunt the Showdown in the comments down below. I love you guys so much. If you enjoyed the video and are pumped for the game, hit that like button. Until next time, have a fantastic day. Drink some hot chocolate and we will see you all later.